Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 13, we will cover how to drill down into a data set to find actionable recommendations and insights. Digging for data is a fairly large topic, so we're going to split it into two separate videos. Before we get started today, I just quickly wanted to touch on this outline we have made for those two videos. In lesson 13, like I said, we're going to cover how to drill down into a data set using pivot tables and charts to create actionable recommendations and insights. This is going to be kind of like treasure hunting. We're going to start with a large amount of data and we're going to summarize, drill, and dig until we find some meaningful patterns. In lesson 14, we will then take these charts as well as the actionable recommendations and learn how to format them and prepare them into a form of business communication like a presentation. One thing I just wanted to remind you all of is that creating charts is not just for the sake of having a pretty picture for a presentation. It is a means to an end. And that end purpose of creating charts can be to illustrate data patterns, help people gain insights into a data set, or to even facilitate decision making based on data patterns. And this is called evidence based decision making. All right, so I'm back at this data set from Good Office here. And this is actually the data set we've been using throughout videos 11 to 12. And we're going to continue to use it today to dig into the data to find actionable insights. So if you remember where we left off in lesson 12, we had just finished creating this map chart. This map chart shows us that Texas was the worst performing state, but if we take a closer look at the legend, we can see they had a negative profit, which meant they had an overall loss. So this is something we need to look into to see why Texas performed so poorly. And that's exactly what we'll do in this next worksheet here. I have a pivot table on the left hand side here that consists of a city column, a sales column, a profit column, and then an average discount column. I have Dallas and Houston highlighted in red text, not only because they are the two cities from uh, Texas, but also if we take a closer look at their data, we can see their profit values are the only two that are negative and their average discount values are much higher than that of the overall average. I have a copy and pasted version of that pivot table here that I've done some editing to and just made some changes. I deleted the average discount column and organized the cities column by ascending sum of sales. So the smallest value is here and it goes all the way up to the largest value. If I scroll over to the right, I have the corresponding version of the chart and then the corresponding edited and final version of the chart, which basically just has the legend incorporated into the title. Now, if I take a look at this graph here, we can see that Houston and Dallas were the cities that experienced losses, which means that we need to do further digging into both these cities to see what the problems were. However, the chart isn't super clear and it doesn't stand out to me right away that Houston and Dallas both experienced negative profit. So let's see if there's a way we can uh, improve the legibility of this chart. I'm gonna scroll over and then scroll down. And here I have another copy and pasted version of that pivot table. This time I've only included the profit column and I have the city column organized in ascending order of profit again. So I have the smallest values all the way up to the highest value. And if I scroll over to see the corresponding chart, we can see right away that it stands out that Dallas and Houston experienced losses because their bars are in that darker red color and are moving in the opposite direction than all the other cities. So we now know we need to dig further into Dallas and Houston to find what their problem is. But it also is important to note that it might be worth looking into New York City or Los Angeles because they performed fairly well in profit to see if there's anything we can learn from those two cities. So now that we know that Dallas and Houston were the cities that performed the worst, we now want to look into subcategory and category data to see if we can find out why. 
On the left-hand side here, I have my pivot table that consists of a subcategory, sales, profit, and average discount column. And here I have a copy and pasted version of that pivot table. I've made some changes with the most important one being that the subcategory column is now just a category column. I have the corresponding chart below here. If we take a moment and look at this chart, we can see that furniture was the category that brought in the second highest amount of sales, but resulted in very little amounts of profit. So this means that there's something going on in furniture sales that is draining all of our profit. If I scroll down again, I have another copy and pasted version of the pivot table. This time I have the subcategory column organized by ascending order of sum of sales. I have the corresponding chart to the right here and then the final edited version of the chart to the right again. The biggest change we made here was incorporating the legend into the title. Now if we take a moment and look at this chart, we can see that tables and bookcases were the two subcategories that performed the worst, which are also a part of the furniture category. So this means we need to do some further digging into tables and bookcases to find out why they are losing so much money. Now this chart is okay. You'll eventually see that tables and bookcases are the two problem subcategories, but it's a bit busy and hard to read. So I'm gonna show you how to make another version of this graph that's even better. We're gonna scroll over to the left and then down again. And here I have another copy and pasted version of my pivot table. This time I have the subcategory column organized in ascending order of profit. And then I have my corresponding chart to the right here. So now it's even more clear that bookcases and tables were the two subcategories that lost money. All right, so now that we know that bookcases and tables were the subcategories that performed the worst, let's do some further digging and see if we can find out why. I have a pivot table here that I've copied and pasted, and I've added a new column that we haven't touched on yet called gross profit margin. Your gross profit margin is sum of profit divided by sum of sales. If you take a look at this table, I have three rows highlighted in red text, the first one here is for subcategory chairs, which has a fairly low gross profit margin of 5%. But if we look at bookcases and tables, we can see their gross profit margin is even lower and is into the negative values. I'm going to scroll down where I have a pivot table made for each subcategory to do a further dive into. And I'm just going to zoom in so we can focus on one pivot table at a time. So this one here is for subcategory tables, and we can see that the overall average discount for tables is fairly high at 26.7%. This means that all cities are highly discounting tables, which is an overall problem, not just for Dallas and Houston. If I scroll down again, this one is for bookcases. Their overall discount is not as high as tables, but if we take a look at Dallas and Houston, which I have highlighted in the red text, we can see that their average discount is much higher, which is a big problem. Again, if I scroll down, this last one is for subcategory chairs. Their overall discount is even better than bookcases and tables. But again, Dallas and Houston are discounting their chairs much higher than that of other cities. All right, so I want to do some further digging into the table subcategory now. And specifically, I want to look at if all tables are unprofitable. I have my pivot table on the left here. And if I scroll through some of the rows, you can see that there are many records in this pivot table. So I've only included the tables with sales higher than $1,000 in my scatter plot on the right here. In this chart, any of the blue dots near the x-axis represent tables that had around $0 worth of profit, and any of the blue dots below the x-axis represent tables with negative profit. So any of the tables in this region here, and you can see there are actually quite a few, are the problem tables in that subcategory. To do some further digging into specific table product names, I have a pivot table here that consists of the tables that lost more than 
To the right, I have a bar chart that is made from that pivot table. Down below here, I have another pivot table, but this time it consists of the tables that made more than $200. Again, to the right, I have a bar chart made from that pivot table. Between these two bar charts, it is extremely clear which tables performed the best and which were the worst. All right, let's do some further investigating into the table subcategory, but this time let's look at a histogram. If you want a refresher on how to create a histogram, please refer back to lesson eight. To the left here, I have my copy and pasted version of the pivot table, and it consists of all the table product names with their sales and profit values. It's important that we know how many records are in this table, so let's take a quick look. You can see in total, there's 215 rows. I've used this pivot table to create my two frequency tables here, and then I've also created my histogram from that. The histogram to the right displays that there's actually not that many tables that make more than $1,000 worth of sales. If I scroll down here, I have another two frequency tables made from that pivot table, and then another histogram. This histogram tells us that there's actually, again, not that many tables that make more than $300 worth of profit. So overall, these two histograms tell us that tables do not generate high sales or profit values. So we're going to look at two more charts that focus on tables, and then we'll move on to examining another subcategory. This bar chart here displays the poorest performing tables, and I'm just going to move to the right. And this bar chart here displays the best performing tables. All right, so you might remember when we looked at the category and subcategory data, we found out that phones was a category or a subcategory that performed fairly well. And I just wanted to touch on this quickly because it is important to look at the items that performed well sales and profit wise to see if there's anything we can learn from them. So on the left hand side here, I have a copy and pasted version of a pivot table that consists of phone product names, sales and profit values. And just by scrolling down, we can see that there's 34 rows in this table. I've used the pivot table to create the two bar charts to the right here. And these bar charts uh, display which phone products performed well and which ones didn't. So we can see that while phones was a better performing subcategory, there are still products that resulted in negative profit and didn't do so well. Just a quick note, whenever you're data digging in real life, managers usually focus on individual products to be able to make decisions about those specific products. All right, so that concludes our lesson for today. Before we wrap up, let's just do a quick summary of everything we've covered. In this lesson, we learned how to drill down into a data set to gain insights. We used a variety of charts that we've covered in previous lessons, like the column chart, line chart, bar chart, histogram, and scatter plot. This is to show you that different types of charts can be used to illustrate different data patterns. In the next lesson, we will go over how to make a PowerPoint presentation to present the data patterns we found in this lesson. You probably noticed that I often copy and pasted the pivot table and then sorted the values and did some editing before I made the charts. This process is very tedious, so if you find yourself making pivot tables and charts frequently, then I strongly suggest you learn how to use Power BI. Power BI can handle more data than Excel and has better options in, term, in terms of data manipulation and chart formatting. It is more efficient to summarize data and create charts in Power BI. We'll cover Power BI in some YouTube videos soon, but thank you for watching today's lesson and we'll see you next time.